Now, what you might not know is that Walmart, if it's got a bakery section, has some of the best donuts that you can find. This also explains why I'm not losing any weight. Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're doing another 3D printing essentials video, but this time we're at Walmart. So let's head on in and see what kind of cool stuff I can find for us today. So almost immediately when I walked in, I found this UV wand sanitizer. Now what I'm thinking is I might be able to use this as a UV wand for my resin 3D prints. Might be something that you're interested in if you're doing resin 3D printing. I'm gonna test it out when I get home and see how well it works. I think it was like six or seven bucks. So pretty cheap for a small portable UV device that I could more easily move around and maybe additionally cure some of the prints that might have not cured fully. I don't know, we'll see how it works out. Now this is a great one, it's Aquanet Hairspray. This stuff works great for bed adhesion for your 3D printers and this one can should last you a really long time. I think mine typically lasts me between a year and two years of usage and it really helps with any of your print adhesion issues that you might have on your build plates for your fdm 3d printers it's also super cheap i was able to find this lazy susan this is a non-skid turnable surface and works really smoothly here it's a little loud when you spin it but what i'm planning on using this for is when i'm painting and finishing my 3D prints. This will give me a way to sit them on this plate and spin this around without me having to actually physically touch and reorient those prints so that I can get different angles when it comes to spraying them. This would also work great for anybody that has a spray booth. I don't have one of those yet, but this will make it a lot easier when it gets to hitting all those different angles. So recently I just did a video on repairing your FEP sheet for your resin 3D printers with some clear packaging tape. And someone left a comment on the video saying that I should check out the Gorilla Tape, their clear tape so i picked this up since i saw it at walmart and it does look really clear compared to my standard packaging tape that i was using and it's supposed to be really durable so this might even work even better than the other packaging tape that i was working with it is a little bit more expensive this is i think close to about ten dollars a roll. Walmart's also a great place to find these spatulas or these scrapers, these paint scrapers, spatulas, whatever you want to call them for getting prints off of your build plates. Typically when it comes to resin 3D printers, you're going to want some sort of a heavy duty scraper to get underneath those prints. What's nice about this one that I found is that it's wide. It's a three inch wide scraper. It's got a nice little angled edge here and it's curved there. So it's, it's, uh, I can come in at a better angle to get it in under it and hopefully pop the prints up. This will be a really nice addition for me to chest out and try out as the bottom just popped off. You know what? I don't know why this whole thing unscrews and I have no idea why. Now this might not seem like an essential, but to me it really is because I have multiple machines up and running typically, and I need extra power outlets and depending on the location you are in your house, you're gonna need some of these additional power strips. And I get typically get mine at Walmart just because of the price. They are really cheap compared to other places like Best Buy or even Amazon, where you can find these for a really affordable price. And plus it's typically, you can just run out on the street and grab these real quick and jet home. So in my previous dollar store video, I talked about getting some tweezers from the dollar store. Well, this is, I think an even better deal. You're getting two, it's for under two bucks for two sets of tweezers. I'm not quite sure how durable or how good these are compared to the ones that you might be able to find at the dollar store, but it should get the job done for what I typically need them for. I also did manage to find these a little bit more of a finer tip set of tweezers there at Walmart as well. This was, again was another two pack and it was a little bit more expensive than those others, but this might allow me to get into a little bit more of a smaller space. Uh, when it comes to removing supports from those resin 3D prints. When it comes to printer maintenance, this is great as well for all of your rails that you have, that you have moving parts. This is WD-40 with white lithium grease. This will help lubricate your printers so that they keep running for a long time. This also might help with some of the, if you see uh, layer inconsistencies in your prints, this might be a potential issue is that your rods have just need a little bit of lube to help smooth them out when they're moving up and down or left and right or whatever, whatever direction they're moving. And speaking of rods, I ended up finding these wooden dowels in the arts and crafts section. Uh, again, I'm planning on using these when it comes to painting my 3D prints. A lot of times they have openings in them and what I'm planning on doing is being able to shove these into the bottom so that I can hold on to the sticks and maneuver them around. Or if I wanna uh, dig these into some styrofoam and use that as a way to prop up 
those prints while I'm spraying them might be a good way to be able to maneuver with those. And again, really cheap for a lot of different wooden dowels. And I could always cut these down further if I needed to. Now, when you're working with some 3D printed projects, you might end up needing magnets. Walmart is a fantastic place to get magnets. Look at this. I got 52 magnets in this one set. That is a crazy amount of magnets that I was able to pick up. You know what? In hindsight, I would say don't buy these. I'm gonna call this out right now. Uh, I thought these were gonna be a lot better than they are. No, they're really, they're really bad. They're uh, barely magnets at all. So avoid this one. Ignore what I just said. This is a horrible deal. It's 52, stick to like Harbor Freight buying magnets. Those magnets work really great. I was hoping this would be a really good deal. Donut break. I was also able to find a ton of isopropyl alcohol while I was in the store. So they've got 70% and 91% that were available in these larger size bottles. Obviously the 70% is gonna be a good bit cheaper than the 91%. I'm still not 100% positive there's a massive difference when I go about cleaning my prints with 70% versus 90 or higher than that. I mean, they all seem to work relatively well. I'm wondering if it's just the longevity of how frequently you're gonna have to change these out or further filter them. Something interesting that I've been meaning to try out is a food dehydrator. This is something that you can end up putting your filament into and letting it run. It'll heat up and help remove some of the moisture that might be in your filament. I've seen a number of people using these food dehydrators on their filaments before and it helps just improve your overall print quality when it comes to printing with different uh, PLA or PET G, whatever it may be. So I'm excited to test this out and try it out. I might do a further follow-up video on this as well once I get it up and running and testing it all out. Also, when you're in Walmart, you're gonna wanna make sure to stop by the toy aisle and check out if there's any cool toys there. Unfortunately, I didn't really see anything good at my local Walmart. Now, I already have one of these, so I didn't buy it, but if you have a Dremel, I would really recommend one of these flex shafts that you can find at Walmart. These attach to the end of your Dremel and it allows you to have this flexible extension that makes it just a much more easy to use tool when it comes to cleaning up your 3D prints. This might be one of my most used tools in my workshop. Another one that I didn't pick up, but I saw there at the store, I wanted to call out that I have at home, is one of these torch kits. These are great when it comes to cleaning up stringing on your 3D prints, and more specifically, if you're using TPU, that more elastic type of filament that you can print with, you'll end up with a lot of stringing potentially, depending on what your settings are like, and it's such an easy way to burn those off quickly. And it's a fun little thing to have on hand when you need it. Now, out of everything that I'm mentioning here in the video, this one might be my most recommended that you pick up if you don't already have one, and it's a huge, garbage can. This is a 32 gallon garbage can. I have multiple of these in my house. I have one in my garage. I have one in my workshop. I have one in my print room and I have one in my office just because those are all different areas where I'm typically working on these 3D printing projects. There are lots of supports that I need to throw out, uh, lots of spools of filament that are empty or emptying, close to emptying that I'll end up tossing out. And it's just a really large garbage can that helps hold a lot of stuff and it helps me prevent me from having to it, you know, constantly shaking out the garbage out of a standard size garbage can where this one is much, much larger and can hold a lot more stuff. You can also find denatured alcohol as well as acetone at Walmart, which is a great way to further clean up some of your resin 3D prints if you can't get access to isopropyl alcohol. You can also find really large clear storage bins for storing all of your filaments. That's what I typically use to store all of mine and it works fairly well when it comes to storing those. Some of them that are a little bit smaller do have gaskets around them. The larger ones typically do not, but that's where I would typically add in something like damp rid, which will help get rid of any moisture inside of the container when you're storing all of your different filaments. One of the typical things that I go to Walmart for is primer. They have lots and lots of different varieties of primer. So this is a flat gray primer. This is a sandable uh, filler primer. There are uh, typically two different sections inside of Walmart, if you're not already aware. There's one for specifically for the spray paints that you might find some. And then there's an automotive section where you'll find some additional spray paints there as well, which you might have some different varieties available that you can pick and choose from. I'll also pick up a lot of my clear coat spray paints from Walmart as well. This is a matte clear, but you can also find glossy clear. There's just a variety of different options in the spray paint section of the store. Now, I did also find this really cool peel and coat 
uh, Rust-Oleum Gloss Black Spray Paint that supposedly, I saw a post over on the Facebooks where someone was saying, you can spray this on an old print bed and it will help add some additional adhesion to the print bed and it should hold up relatively well. I'm gonna try and lay this down and see how well it works. This is 100% sure a video that I wanna try out because I already have an older build plate that was just really wearing away on my Elgu Neptune 2. So I wanna try this out and see how it works on that build plate and if it allows me to restore it back to its original greatness. Speaking of that, let me take a minute to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Elgu. They are the makers of the Elgu Neptune 2, the Elgu Mars, the Elgu Saturn, and a variety of amazing resin 3D printers and different resins. You can find more information about Elgu's products in the links down below. And there's some new Elgu products coming in the upcoming months. We have a new Elgu Mars as well as a Neptune X, and there are some new wash and cure options that are coming out for your resin 3D printers. If you're interested in more information about any of the Elgu products, you can find links down below. Thanks again to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. Here's a great one that one of my Patreon members recommended. These are alcohol wipes that you can use on your different build plates to help wipe them down after printing. They're just these little swabs that you can open up and then wipe it down and then toss it out. This was a hundred swabs here. I think it was for a dollar. It's pretty crazy. This should last me quite a while. When it comes to cleaning up resin 3D prints, I like to use toothbrushes. And this is a six pack that you can find at Walmart for really cheap. I think this was a dollar, maybe $2. I can't remember the price. I'll have, I'll try to have these on the screen, but a great option here for you to be able to get a bunch of different uh, brushes here for cleaning off your resin 3D prints. When it comes to painting and cleaning up things like airbrushes, you can never have too many Q-tips. So I was able to pick up a big box of Q-tips here. This should easily last me for like five years with the amount of painting that I do. I mean, which is a good amount, but not nearly as much as I think I do. And these are 500 Q-tips and I might use like five at a time. This Loctite super glue is one of the primary super glues that I typically use when it comes to gluing together my 3D prints. It's a little bit more of the, on the expensive side compared to something like Harbor Freight or the dollar store, but you get a good amount of it here and it typically lasts me quite a while. One of the problems that I do run into though is that it does end up getting gunked up in the top here and I might not be able to use up all of the super glue that comes in the container. When it comes to sanding your 3D prints, you're gonna typically want to get the best finish possible and Walmart has just a huge variety of sandpaper that's available to you. I know I've talked about this before in the Harbor Freight video, but this is where you can find 1,000 and higher. So I just got a pack here that's 1,000, uh, 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500 grit sandpaper all in one little package here. This is gonna be, again, great for when it comes to wet sanding any of your helmets or anything like that, that you wanna have a really glossy, smooth finish. And speaking of finishing your different 3D prints, so when it comes to filling spots, this is the Bondo Glaze Spot Putty. This is a ginormous container of this as well. Really easy to sand. You can use it with your fingers. It is a little bit messy and you're gonna get it on your finger. If you're using your fingers, you're gonna wash, wash it off properly, but it sands really easily and it does stink just a little bit. So be careful when you're using that indoors. But there's also these uh, tack cloths. These are great when you're actually sanding and you wanna clean up your print before you actually run off and paint anything. This will help basically just a sticky cloth that you can rub all over whatever your 3D print is and it'll help remove any of the chalky like substance that's left over on your prints. All right, I did wanna mention a few things for you out there that are selling 3D printed items on Etsy or online, whatever it may be. I buy a good bit of my supplies when it comes to actually packaging up my items to send them out. The first one I wanna talk about are these reclosable bags. You can get a hundred of these, I think for $2. Uh, they're pretty good size. It's a four by six inch. So if you're doing key change or, or smaller things like that, these are a fantastic option for you. Uh, these are also what we use for our resin lapse cables as well that we sell. So uh, it's just a good option that's out there. We also have available these are just sandwich bags, Ziploc bags. They're 200 pack. I think there's a 300 and maybe even a 400. 
Uh, I will use these when it comes to packaging up some of my Etsy orders that have multiple pieces so that everything just stays together with that one item. Uh, it might not be the most professional looking thing in the world to get a Ziploc bag, but I figure it's better than that coming loose and then it's floating around in the box and potentially getting lost. So having that come in these Ziploc bags has worked great for me over the past handful of years. And then the last one I wanna mention are cardboard boxes. Don't sleep on Walmart. It's a lot cheaper to get cardboard boxes at Walmart than it is at your local Staples or even some of your other stores, unless you're buying them online in bulk. But this is what I will typically do is when I'm looking to sell something that I don't have the exact box size for, I'll go to my local Walmart and see if I can find a box that somewhat fits it. And it gives me an idea of what size box I'm going to need. And then I'll run off and try and source that and buy that in bulk, typically depending on how much I'm selling of that item. But when I was just first getting started with selling on Etsy, I was buying out tons and tons of cardboard boxes from Walmart. And typically they have things like four by four by four. In this example, it's six by six by six. And they have another whole bunch of different size options that are out there for you. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you guys, and there's probably lots of other things that are out there. So let me know in the comments if you have other suggestions. But the last one I wanted to call out are just all of the different paint supplies that are available to you. They have lots and lots and lots of different paint brush options that are typically really cheap especially if you're just getting started with painting miniatures or smaller props and need some detail brushes this is a fantastic way to get a hold of some of these brushes and not spend a ton of money like you might spend at a miniature gaming store type like sort of thing like that until you're ready to expand your craft and spend a little bit more uh, and then you also have some really great acrylic paint options so you typically have two different options when it comes to acrylic paints at walmart there is this apple barrel brand and then the folk art brand the folk art typically is a little bit more expensive than the apple barrel but i I do like the folk art better than the apple barrel. I find that it just, it spreads a lot better than the apple barrel does, but there's so many color options for you and it's just try it out and they're super cheap compared to something that you might see at Michael's or anything like that. So uh, don't sleep on that. It's a, it's a great option for you when shopping at Walmart. So that was some of the essentials that you can find for 3D printing while shopping at Walmart. Hopefully this helps some of you out there. I so enjoy making these videos and showing you some of the things that I typically buy and I've, that I've found that I wasn't aware of inside some of these different stores. If you have other store options that you think that would be interesting for me to check out, let me down in the comments. Or if you have any other cool things that I didn't even mention that you recommend picking up over at Walmart, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking as well for just good deals on things or tools or whatever it may be to further help our craft in this community. I did also wanna take a minute to say thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. I posted recently about this and a number of you listed some feedback of things that I should be on the lookout for when shopping. So thank you so much for that. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon, you can find links down below. But thanks for watching you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I have a donut I need to finish. So I'm gonna head on out of here. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Oh my God, I got donut all over my car.